Divine, all blessed, peace and love, joy and prosperity. You are now listening live to the Divine Prince, Pan-African spiritualist, practitioner, author, and advisor, Elagun Oloye Hudu Obeya Bokur. You're also watching me live, I'm sorry, in archive on YouTube, as well as an archive at Blog Talk Radio at your leisure and convenience. My YouTube URL is youtube.com forward slash voodoo Thai. That's V like Victor, O-O-D-O-O-T-Y-E. And I also can be listened to in archive as well as live at high noon U.S. Central Standard Time here on Blog Talk Radio at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the hyphen divine hyphen Prince, sharing with you in all things spiritual, mystical, metaphysical, cosmic, evolutionary, revolutionary, healing, and holistic from a Pan-African Hoodoo world spiritualist perspective, understanding that all is truly and indeed a blessing if you can just see beyond the veils, for it is all just an illusion and a test and one of the greatest divine mysteries of this life cycle. This is my constant prayer, my mantra, affirmation, reverberation, reiteration, and my ever-living reality. It is also crucial to the very foundation of my understanding, my teaching, my walk, my works along this divine, all-blessed life path and journey. It is truly and indeed how I, the Divine Prince, make sense out of all that we're challenged with every day here in our existence on Mother Father Earth, and it is my personal place of power and understanding. We say understanding, but we also say understanding, those who have a more specific understanding. So all is a, a blessing, no matter what the challenge, no matter what the event, no matter what's happening in the moment, it's all temporal, temporary transitory and in transition. So remember, it's all a blessing. There has to be a higher goal, a deeper purpose, more depth in the meaning for all is a blessing to be effective in your life. All is a blessing suggests that even the challenges are preparing you, bringing you forth, fertilizing the soil love helping to bring forward the manifestation of something that's real and true right now in this present moment in time space for each and every one of us. If it's not result oriented, it's nonsense in my opinion. If it's not result oriented, it's ego and foolishness in my opinion. So I welcome each and every one of you today, this Thursday, July 13th, 2017, I am broadcasting live virtually, verbally, cosmically, quantum, universally on Blog Talk Radio, as well as in archive at your leisure and convenience on Blog Talk Radio, but also on my YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash V-O-O-D-O-O-T-Y-E, Voodoo Thai, and that is on my YouTube channel. Broadcasting from this beautiful, legendary, and historic city of New Orleans, Louisiana, the land of my ancestors and those who came before me along this spiritualist who do obey a life path and journey, passing down the great obia stick along with the healing, life-giving herbs, roots, plants, rituals, spirits, and minerals. I'm always humbled and honored by those of you who frequent my YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash voodoo Thai V like Victor O O. T like Tom, O, O, T, uh, I'm sorry, V like Victor, O, O, D like David, O, O, T like Tom, T, Y, E, Voodoo Thai at YouTube.com, and also my blog talk radio 
It's blogtalkradio.com forward slash the hyphen divine hyphen prince. Uh, for those of you who need verification and validation, I am human. I am human. You, you just saw a moment and heard a moment of my humanity. So I do make mistakes. I'm not perfected in any way. I am confronted with the same challenges that all of you are, the same fears that many of you have. Uh, the difference is that I trust the power of the ancestors. I trust the empowerment that comes with the demonstration of authentic voodoo practice, religion, and tradition. My website where I can be reached virtually 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and using many means, social media, uh, psychicworld.com, psychicorg.com, keen.com, and of course my website, www.houseofthedivineprince.com. I can also be reached live here during my live Block Talk Radio airing at 347-215-8967, 347-215-8967. When you have your question, comment, or request ready, press the number one, and I will humbly respond to you momentarily. Remember that all is truly and indeed a blessing. I do this show because spiritual power lies in its efficacy. Spiritual knowledge, edification, what we read, what we internalize, what we study, what we memorize, what we learn ultimately comes forward in your demonstration at the crossroads. The crossroads is that point of contact, that point of activity, th that moment when you have to make that instinctive, intuitive, right in the moment decision or choice, whether it's driving, whether it's at work, whether it's in living, everyday living, how you communicate with your children, how you deal with the challenge, how you deal with the negative when you are confronted with it. There's no running from, concealing from, moving away from, isolating from the negatives that help balance the tail of this world, that help to bring the balance of light and dark, good and evil in the polarities that do exist in our linear existence. But in that quantum metaphysical understanding where we know that we're inter and intradimensional operating in many multi-dimensional spaces the gods and the goddesses those of conscious mind can choose orchestrate self-create our reality so spiritual knowledge and power lies in its efficacy and its ability to produce and manifest powerful reliable tangible lasting manifestation and results right here in this moment in time space right now where the challenge is where the bill is where the sickness is where the issue is where the legal crisis might exist where the housing crisis might exist you cannot over focus on just the material world that material thing that you need to accomplish it is real and it exists in one dimensional space, but there are other dimensional spaces like time, like how we think, perceive, create, and recreate here that directly affect what manifests outside of our ori, our God consciousness, our head, and into our active everyday world. That's why we do this. That's why we do the show. So I am humbled and appreciative of those of you who continue to listen, who do call in and participate in the show daily at high noon U.S. Central Standard Time here on Blog Talk Radio for the Power Lunch, Hoodoo, New Orleans Voodoo Secrets and Recipes. I'm humbled and honored by those of you who enjoy and share the show in archive at your leisure and convenience, 24 hours a day, seven days a week here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash the hyphen divine hyphen prince but also on youtube at youtube.com forward slash voodoo tie v o o d o o t y e voodoo tie i wanted to talk today in line with spirit in line with the rhythm of the day the practice the tradition Ose Wu 
who run who I keep T I go more Kabik Bay Lashun I defy fine who U Sanla O Sir Re Megbo T in low re Gabe O Jesso Ni Yawo Everyone Nico what I say O Gab Ekbo O Rubo Oba in la obi o se e ti mi ri o oni le o jo o se. My Yoruba isn't the best. Some of you know no Yoruba at all. So without plain language, without plain conversation, without a manner of communication which is universal to us, to those who are speaking and to those who are listening, the loftiness of our titles, our initiations, our positions lose its value. It is only in the understanding. It breaks into pieces. It cracks into tiny fragments. It is not the practice to paint dry palm fronds from Campbell. These were Ifa's messages for Osanla, Ose Remegbo, when seeking the hand of Ojese as a wife. He was advised to perform sacrifice. He complied. O Benla, I hereby offer my Ose coronets. Today is the Ose day. And this is from Holy Odu, Ose Meiji. It is why we acknowledge tradition. It is why we acknowledge protocol. It is why we acknowledge the ritual cycle. It is why we do things according to tradition. It doesn't mean that we as co-creators don't recreate and create our reality and every minute every moment every second every decision making opportunity every crossroad of every day but it is with that foundation of the shoulders of the ancestors that we all stand upon that those truths those traditions truly have their manifestation and ultimate demonstration in our lives and how we move forward and manifest. Majobo awo oya, iwo ni orisha obinren afefe, iwo ni aluwa awo iku, iwo ni orisha obinren ifufu lile, iwo ni alagun olagun obinren jolu nase iwo ni imi iye. I humble myself before the mysteries of Oya. You are the goddess of the wind. You are the owner of the mysteries of death. You are the goddess of the tempest. You are the greatest female warrior. You are the breath of life. To my callers, I see you. Please, at any moment, raise your hand. Press the number one. I'll be glad to invite you into the conversation. Unlike Yemaya and Oshun, who command our attention through their grace and beauty and majesty. Orisha Oya is the invisible Orisha. In fact, her face is said to be so terrible that none dare to look upon it or behold it. So often when we dance Orisha Oya, when we possess the spirit of Oya, a veil will be worn or placed over your human face, symbolic of Oya hiding her physical face, but also the symbolic representation of the power of mysteries, secrets, protocols, things that we know and come to understand through practice, tradition, study, instruction, initiation, if you will, but also the very experience of life. Orisha Oya is the invisible Orisha. Her presence and action is reflected in the flight of birds, the swaying of trees, the whistling of the atmosphere, the blowing of dust, the hurling of dirt, the movement of the waves, the sound of music, the spoken word, the cry of a baby, the roar of the lion the movement of clouds, and the life of fire. It is Orisha Oya who gives us our passport to life, the breath of life at birth, and requires its return at death. She receives back that breath of life when we exhale for the last time. 
O Yah is therefore the watcher of the doorway between life and death. And it explains why she's often misrepresented as the guardian of the gates to the cemetery. She is the watcher of the doorway between life and death. She is not death. Death is Iku, I-K-U in Yoruba. But she is the awareness of its existence. Orisha, Obatala, Yemaya, Ogun, and Oshun are all connected with the blood. But if Oya does not imbue the blood with her ashe, with her breath, the life process cannot proceed. Not only is Oya's ashe essential to the life process of the God seekers, the soul journeys, as I've called them previously on my show, and other creatures that inhabit this reign of ashe, this realm of spirit and breath, but also she is the one who carries the pollen of the plants and trees from place to place, either directly in her invisible hands or on the body of birds, the bees that fly in her ever-present embrace, the wind, the tides, if you will. She is the weather. She is Mother Earth in symbolic representation of the weather, which comes and goes, and we don't directly control or directly influence. You either prepared for it, it rains and, and you're dry, or you get wet. It's either hot and the sun beams down, or you wear a wide brim hat and sheltering cooling clothing and you prepare for it. But we can't directly affect or influence weather. It's one of those spiritual, scientific, living phenomena that we are a part of, but don't directly influence. So Osh Orisha Oya is symbolic of things that are felt more often than seen. In this sense, she is associated with the covert activities and secret organizations and secret operations and secret movements of life, of science, of religion and spirituality. She's representative of the movement, what is suggested, what is implied of, of those things. Orisha o Oya is also representative of the destruction of old society, making way for the new and the power to completely destroy cities and fields like hurricanes, like tornadoes, torrential rains, traumatic weather events, reverting them back to their original state. We know there's fertility in that destruction. There's also the doing away with what is no longer useful or beneficial in the movement of Oya. She accomplishes this by sending cyclones, tornadoes, hurricanes, literally and figuratively, into our lives, into our earth existence, which destroy everything in their paths, forcing mankind to rebuild, restore, repair, regenerate, rejuvenate. It is agreed among the scholars of the Fog that Oya was Shango's favorite wife. And it is said that when Shango wants to fight, he sends Oya ahead of him to fight with the wind. Further, without Oya, there is nothing Shango can accomplish. When Shango sends his voice of thunder ahead of his approaching lightning, it is the Ashe of Oya that gives expression to his voice as thunder, which is caused by the sudden expansion of air. It is in the path of an uh, electrical charge that we see the dance and the movement and the swing that is the pairing, the marriage, the romantic intertwining of Shango and Oya. Uh, for my viewers,